God, please, no, 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 no! <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new Season Pass Ultimate Tank, the Bat Chatillon 12T Bis, better known as the Barasque. Now this is a tank that I have actually been really kind of enjoying playing. I've played quite a lot of games in it now and I really do enjoy it. It does sit in the bracket of kind of an average medium tank. There's one, one big thing that is bad about this tank for me and that is the derpy gun handling mixed with bad reload. So for me on initial impressions, they either need to make it so that the reload is better, so that if you do miss with the derpy shots, then it's not as bad because you reload quite quick. Or they need to make the gun less derpy, have a better aim time, so that you basically don't miss as many shots with that long reload. Because there's a lot of times that you do have shots that just fly into random spots. Even now in 6.0 with the good crew skills and the good gun handling. Definitely makes it more manageable now than it would have been pre-6.0. But it's still a pain in the backside. But for me, it's my kind of tank and I really enjoy it. So it might be a little bit skewed in that, but I do really enjoy it. There is one thing that is great about this tank. And that is the fact that it is very very good with its camo rating it's incredible and it means you can just be really stealthy with it so let's get into the stats anyway 190 pen it's not the best and especially with APCR it means you get quite a lot of drop off on range and that can be quite painful there's a lot of targets which you will struggle with with 190 pen so that's not the greatest 240 isn't bad 240 is enough for most of the tier 8s 9s that you'll see struggle with some of the tier 10s but for the most part it'll be all right i mean if you catch people's flanks with 240 it'll be fine there's quite a lot of tanks with even 190 pen that you'll struggle even to pen in the side at tier 8 and 9 i'm thinking the super heavies at that 360 alpha so two shots for 360 alpha that's 720 alpha clip but obviously now with the damage rng changes where you get minus 25 percent and plus 15 percent or is it plus 10 percent one of the two means that that average damage is a lot less so generally don't count if you know that you come across a tank with 350 health or something like that don't count that you're going to kill it because you will low roll for like 320 i've generally been playing this tank and averaging for about 330 roundabouts maybe a bit less than that it, it's really unreliable in that but the double tap auto loader that this thing has makes that 360 with 720 clip in total quite nice 1250 horsepower now that is pretty deep uh, 20 horsepower hit points read man read 1250 hit points now that's okay that's typical medium tank levels really it's sort of the medium tank light tank element of it it's like a light tank that's crossed into a medium tank that's why it's got 1250 62 kilometers an hour top speed is really quick it does shift when it's going in a straight line it's very nice it's a little bit sluggish to get up to it but when it is going it's it's pretty nippy which is nice 390 meters view range which is great you can pump that up to about 554 meters i think with good crew skills and equipment which is very very nice and that makes use of its good concealment that you see here with 34% camo. Use the camo skills, use a camo net. You'll see later when we get to the garage bit. Honestly, this tank is, is fantastic. There will be, I'm not going to show the full replay of Sunset Coast, but I do have a Sunset Coast replay, which I will show, where you see how good the camo is on this thing, especially when using the crew skills like Muffled Shot. It's great. So it's it's a pretty good sneaky sniper, although it's not really a sniper because the gun handle is terrible as you'll see. But it's a really good, really good sneaky tank. So we go down here, and we've got a 4.14 round a minute rate of fire, 27 seconds base reload. You get this down without using food to about 22.4 second reload, and that is it. It is slow for this to to tap. It is slow. It, you do feel it in a lot of situations where you sit there twiddling your thumbs for a little bit thinking, oh, if only I really reloaded. It, all it has to do is be reloading for about 20 seconds when it's fully pimped. But, yeah, it's a little bit slow, a little bit painful. 
plus 3.2 second aim time, which is atrocious. 3.2 second aim time with the 0.42 accuracy is tragic. And that means that when you are using this two-shot autoloader here, as you see, with, I think it's an intro clip of two seconds, which it's not telling us on this bit. Yeah, it's two seconds anyway with the intro clip. It means that you reload that second shell faster than you aim. So a lot of the time when you're just popping that double tap to get running, because it's a run and gun kind of tank, you will probably miss that second shot, or the second shot will fly to places that it, you don't want it to. And it means you've got to take that extra half a second to a second to be able to actually like put the second shot out with a good effect. And it can be kind of irritating in that way. 36 rounds of ammo capacity, it's not a much, really isn't. You're going to be in long-winded games running out of ammo, especially with the amount of misses and stuff you can pull off in this tank. That 36 ammo capacity can be a little bit painful, and I have run out of state. Say I'm running, because I run about 20 standard rounds and 16 premium rounds, right? The amount of times I've run out of the standard and had, because I decided to reload earlier on and reload that one shell the amount of times i've run out of standard shells but only loaded one shell because you don't know it's it's very annoying but yeah the, the ammo capacity isn't the best like i said the 0.42 accuracy is poor we'll see what we can get that down to with crew skills and stuff like that in the garage in a bit six degrees of gun depression is it's pretty it's okay it's, it's a very low profile tank so six degrees of gun depression is is all right it's not the best in the universe but at the same time you don't really feel like you've got no gun depression at all in the tank it's not like you're a very tall tank so that's okay the 13 degrees of elevation yeah you do feel that sometimes when you're on a sort of an incline can be a little bit irritating at times but yeah it whatever armor well it's a batch at 12t light tank hull so you have none yeah, none. The 44 degrees a second traverse speed on the hull. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a little bit slow. You're thinking 44 degrees a second. That's, that's really quick, isn't it? Well, it feels slow as anything on the tank. It does turn like a slug. And you will notice that you cannot out-traverse people. And yeah, it's a bit of a painful one at that. But... Yeah, yeah, it's probably a balancing factor. So you're not like you you're not just a batch at 12T, but with a big honking gun, and I can see probably why that has been done. But it is a little. So you've got to be wary that you won't be out traversing many things. 310 horsepower, which equals 25.77 horsepower per ton. Like I say, it is a little bit sluggish off the mark, but that's because it is quite low in its horsepower. It may have great power to weight, but it does just feel that little bit slow getting off the mark. But with the 62 kilometers an hour top speed. It's rapid once it gets going. 23 kilometers an hour reverse speed is fantastic for that moment. You go, oh no, there's a tank there, reverse around the corner. And you get back out of it pretty quickly, which is nice. Traverse speed of the turret, 40 degrees a second is okay. It does mean you don't, you your turret doesn't keep up with the track traverse at times. So it does, if you're turning around sometimes, sometimes the turret doesn't keep up with the tank. And just be wary that it doesn't catch you out. Terrain resistances mean that they, I, th I believe they they mean they affect as well the ability to, for the tank to turn and that's what helps to make it feel a bit sluggish. But yeah, so that's the stats part of this Barask. Let's go into the garage, look at the crew skills and look what the effective values of the tank are. So here we are in the garage with the Bat Chatty on 12T Bis, the Barask. This is the skin that you do get with the Brask when you buy it from the Ultimate Pass. And yeah, it, it looks alright. It, the issue is it's not really that embellished. I feel it's a little bit understated for if you're going to buy a camo, say, for 3k gold. It's a little bit understated. You just get a camo net that's draped over the front that doesn't even flap. And you get a muddy tank. But on the whole, I mean, it's a very nice looking tank. And to, let's be honest, this is a way better skin than what we used to get on stuff like the Bone Shaker, Roger Dodger, you know what I mean? Like, So th I much prefer this kind of skin. Is it worth the 3k gold? No. It, you just put camo on and it still looks as good as it did before anyway. But yeah, it's, be it's a step in the right direction, right? But yeah, it's a very nice looking tank as well, the Barasca. I really do like it. So let's get into 
all of this. So I run an opt coat optics, vertical stabilizers, and a camo net. Right. I run optics because, well, you're going to be running this thing as like a pseudo scout, basically. So you want to be able to spot as much as possible. So you see, we've got the vision range up with the cruise skills we've got up to 454 meters view range, which is great for a tier eight. That's good. That means we can spot a lot of people and we can kind of use it like a pseudo scout, right? The Bert stabs because the gun handling is woeful and it really does need that 20% extra accuracy. It really does need it. It, it. Yeah, it's painful. So it does need that. And the advanced concealment because, well, it reduces the tank concealment by a lot and it's always active. So this tank is all about its camo and its sneakiness. So that advanced concealment is why I'd run that over vents. There is the the argument you could run vents instead of the camo net, but I feel like this tank is best when it doesn't get spotted and it can drop its clip and run. Like, that's why I run the advanced concealment. People may disagree with me, but that, that's just my personal opinion. That's how I like to play the tank. So, it really helps you out in a lot of situations, and that's why I run those equipment slots that I do. Obviously, premium consumables, because who doesn't want reusable consumable feature? Ammo wise, I carry 20 standard rounds, 16 prem rounds. The 16 prem rounds get you out of anything that you see tier 10 or tier 9. And the 20 standard are enough for most other games, and you want to make money because it's a premium tank, right? The gun stats with the crew skills and everything that we've got, we get it down to 0.34 accuracy, which is pretty decent, but at the same time, it still feels derpy. But yeah, 0.34 accuracy is not bad. But there is a lot of tanks that will have a hell of a lot better. And if you consider a Stone Cold that has a two tap, it's way more accurate than this thing is. And it's got better aim time. And it's got armor. And it's got decent mobility anyway. But then this is a pseudo scout and not an active medium tank. Or an aggressive brawling medium tank. Kind of like that anyway. 4.59 rate of fire rounds a minute. With everything boosted. That's as good as it gets. Like I say, 22.4 seconds without activating your food. I think it's 21.9 with the food. The reload is slow. And it does. you do feel it. I wish it was better, but that's the way it is. And that's pretty much all I can show you in this bit. So let's go to the commander. So the commander for the Brask. I have tried a couple of different things, like putting silent driving and stuff on. And dropping stuff like trap mechanic, but honestly, the the big problem with this tank as well is the fact that it's just the same as the Batchap 12T, right? That has the same issue. It's the fact that it's a it's a big tank, right? It's a but well, it's a long tank, and the whole side is tracks. When they shoot you in the side, I've been just getting tracked most times, and that is really annoying, and it's an issue. So. I actually had to go back to taking silent driving off and putting track mechanic on because honestly just getting tracked is a, it's an absolute nightmare for this thing. So, anyway. Born leader because making 10% crew 10% more effective is definitely the one. Rapid loading because the reload is terrible. You want to increase the reload as much as possible. So 10% increase of the gun reload speed is preferable. I mean, I suppose you could accept you've got a long reload and drop it and put silent driving on maybe. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. That's why this crew system is the way it is. You can chop and change and things and give up like a DPM build for a camo build. It's, you know, camouflage expertise because it's, it needs that 10% increase to your camo rate and is, is lovely. And honestly, this tank loves that camo, that camo it has. Muffled shot because, again, staying in the bushes, pulling back behind the bushes and reducing the camo, you know, reducing the effect of the camo when you fire... Is so helpful so you can pull back behind the bushes fire at people and never get spotted like you'll see in one of the clips I was about 200 meters away from a conqueror sat in bushes pulling back behind the bushes firing never spots me never spots me and that's the beauty of it sixth sense because you always want to know when you're spotted track mechanic because again like I said earlier on it's all tracks on the side it gets tracked it's done for you don't want that. You want to get your tracks back up as quick as possible and get out. Situational awareness, like I say, because it's a pseudo scout. So you want to be spotting everything you possibly can. 
Steady aim, 10% accuracy increase, because the gun is derpy as hell, you need the accuracy increase. It's definitely a thing you want. And run and gun, because it is a run and gun type of tank. The perk is what the tank can be like, right? When you go in on people, sometimes you want to assassinate them. And you don't want... This, there's a lot of opportunity to not want to be stopping. So you want to go past people and drop your shots as you're going past. So for me... I run this over snapshot because that 10% increase to accuracy when you're moving is very nice when you just drive in, when you just drive by assassinations basically and it really does help because of how bad the gun handling is. But you could run snapshot if you're not anticipating playing it as actively basically. So it's your choice. It's all your choice. I mean that's what the crew system is. It's down to interpretation, but that's what I run. And that's what you'll be seeing in the replays. So that is the garage part of this. I will be going over the gameplay and I'll hope you'll enjoy the gameplay and basically let yourselves make your own minds up by watching the tank play in action. So I'll see you there. So here we are in the replays and this is the clip from Sunset Coast where the camo, well it just shows how good the camo is on this tank. So as we come around this corner, we spot the M46 pattern. He's 70 meters away and he didn't spot me until I dropped my clip into him which well, just shows how good the camo is on this tank even when I was moving into those bushes he still didn't spot me and that's an M46 pattern with 410 meters view range right that is a tank that even without a good crew should still probably spot me at that range and then you're seeing again here with the on this huntsman and on the conqueror we're firing now through these bushes and we're not getting spotted that's that's the effect of having the good camo skills and how good the camo is on this tank but you're also seeing a bad point of the tank right here and that is just how slow this reload is this reload is so 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 slow like you just sit here twiddling your thumbs for a little while where you are just stuck in a reload and we finally managed to get the shots in so that we can put the shots into that conqueror but yeah that is the big problem with this tank, really, and that's that's the reload. The reload with the bad aim time, bad accuracy, it kind of hurts it quite a lot. But at the same time, it is still a very, very capable tank. So here we are in the second... in Well, I say in the second replay. There is three replays in this video. And this is the first of them. And we're on El Haloof. So we're going to play, not like a medium tank, but like a light tank. We're going to go to the middle down here and we're going to go spot the crossings and stuff like that up on their side of the hill. So we're going to go onto this hill here and we're going to try and spot out anything that climbs the hill or climbs down, I should say. And that's what this tank is good at because it is a Batch at 12T hull but with a big honking gun on it. And as you see, we catch this T25-2 out and we managed to drop two shots into him, and we get away. Because that is one thing he is good at, especially when he's going downhill. I mean, that's like most tanks. That you can just bug out. If you have any real issues, you can just run. And that's what the tank is good for, and that is run and gun. Scouting and run and gun is definitely what this tank is designed for. It's just, like I say, it's a shame how bad the reload is. It's kind of annoying, because you have bad gun handling. And then to mix that with... A bad reload means that you tend to just miss the odd shot and that shot that you miss tends to be quite annoying so right here I'm thinking about shooting at that VK 101p but generally the pen on this tank is 190 which is gonna struggle with him so I actually aim up for this t34 and we get one shot in and we get two and that is something I did forget to mention in the stats bit is the fact that this tank has 1000 meters a second shell velocity on its standard APCR and it gets premium APCR which has 1200 and something on its rounds so we're looking at this HMH 58 now and we're like okay let's shut this guy down because this is a play that a lot of people have been doing recently where they all push up across that area and then up behind the tanks up on the two line and that really bugs me when I'm playing on the two line because they just come up and then like they'll do what that HMH has just done where he probably just drove, driven up and then dropped his whole clip into the back of a tank that's up there by by shooting it I've made it a one shot so hopefully that my team that is up there 
can get rid of him quite easily, which is what's just happened. Now this VK 101, 101P has made a mistake, and we're going to drop both our shells into him and finish him off. But he spotted us, and it's like, okay, you know what, I'm not going to sit around to get shot up. So we're going to get out of dodge, get out of here, and not get shot like that. Now, we do get lucky, because we hit that tree... And we lose most of our momentum. And we get lucky that I think it was the Dreadnought that fired at us from back there. And he missed us. So good fortune for us right there. And my now thinking is to get behind the guys on the B line. Because if I can get behind them and start putting shots into their butts. That will help my guys that are fighting for the cap up in the top corner. Now I'm looking for shots at the Super Pershing. But unfortunately he just pulls forward so we can't get shots at him. And now it's this T29. He is now the focus of what I want to do. And unfortunately, we lose a bit of elevation there as we hit a little dip. And we're going to try and put some shots into the back of him. So we fire one, and we pen, and then there's the bad gun handling. We ricochet off the back of the T-29, because it actually went high and ricocheted off his engine deck. But we've pumped those shots, and they, he started to turn around a little bit, so it's time to just get out there. We've, we've overstayed our welcome, and we're going to go now hunting for the artillery. So you see one shot there coming from the right and you see one from the left. So we know that that GW or the other tank, the other RT, which is the M4043 there. So we know where the M4043 is, right? He's up there. Did you see? You saw where the shell velocity of the other RT is, which is the GW, and he was on the right. So I'm expecting the artillery to be in that direction. Now we do have a light tank that is running down into that corner where artillery does like to hide. But I'm pretty confident it's not going to be there. So this IKV is now rushing our medium down there. So we try and, we, well, we say try. We do pop a shot towards him and kill him to try and help our guy. The Dreadnought pops over and shoots him. And we use the final shell in the clip to pen the Dreadnought for 307. I say you want to keep your eye on these rolls because these rolls are very low and it's consistently quite bad. So you never keep 360 ever. And it is kind of annoying. Now that GW tried to pop a shot at us to shut us down, but fortunately enough, he missed, so we're going to just charge in. And he is the focus of my attention. I want him, I want my Pascuches, and I don't care if I take a hit from the Dreadnought here, I want to shut this guy down. Unfortunately enough for me, he does hit us, he hits us for like, what, 600? And now we're going to reload. He's sort of rushing our way, so I'm like, you know what, no, we're not, we're not playing this game, mate, we're not playing it. And we get behind this little ridge line here. Now, I want to shoot this guy, but I don't think I'm going to get the reload off because this Ragnarok is going to kill him, and he does. And now there's only three guys left, and they're all where the cap is. Now, there's only two left, which is a Black Prince and a, another TD. So we're going to keep. Oh, the other TD is the T25 slash 2, which is the guy that we actually left down. On the other line. I think he actually went round and did God's work and killed our artillery. No, I left him because, well, there was other places I could go get shots without getting shot myself. So that's why I did it. And he managed to make good of that, the fact that I left him to go do God's work. Which, hey, commend the guy. Fully commend him, you know. So, we're looking at that heavy tank and it's like, mm, he's getting closed down. We're probably not going to get shots at him. So, you, I'm looking at him, I'm looking at the Black Prince, and it's like, uh, yeah, he's dead. So we swivel out of that, we know where the T25-2 was going, so we're going to go try and cut him off, and hopefully we'll get the finishing shot into him, and we'll end this game with a little bit more damage. But yeah, you'll see, like this is the mobility of the Barask here, and we are just darting towards it. It's, it's got the mobility of a light tank, which is great. I mean, we're going uphill right now, and we're doing 50k, it's quite easy. And as we come across the T25 slash 2, we finish him off. And we finish that game with 4.1k damage. A nice amount of kills as well. If we see it, there we go. 5 kills, 40 assistance, Pascucci's medal, sniper, high calibre. Yeah, and I think that showed the, the mobility and the run and gun aspect of the brass quite well that game. Because you could get about, it just shows you how the mobility helped it to get about. Keep flanking and spanking, which is what the tank wants to do. But like you see with the T29, when we shot his back end, one penned, and even though it was near enough fully aimed, the shot still went high and ricocheted off the back of the engine deck. Because that's what this tank does. 
And even with 6.0 accuracy skills and having that 0.34 accuracy, it still loves a good miss. And that aim time is horrible. And like I say, that's, that's where it would be nice to have the slightly better reload. It's either that, where they make the reload better, or they make the gun handling better. One of the two. So we're on Himmelsdorf and we've gone to the train tracks. And we've caught this M48A2 Undertaker out. Now we've tried some... Chancy shots is the best way of putting it. We got unlucky, really, with the first shot. It ricocheted off his side. But the second shot was definitely chancy because with 190 pen, we're not going to go through the Undertaker's front of the turret. You need about 220 to go through that pretty reliably. So it was kind of pointless doing that. But here you see with the rela reloading, we're just twiddling our thumbs. Like I just parked up and went, like, this is where I'm going to be. But again, this is where I go... Camouflage, right? We pulled out in front of him, and he only really spotted us when he got into the 200 meter range. And it was like, oh, there's a tank. And we managed to pop two shots in and pull back. And again, we are waiting for that reload. And we're just waiting to, for it to go in so that we can actually go and try and get some more shots at this guy. So now the shells are in. We pop around the corner. He must have s someone dead because somehow he doesn't spot us, and we only get spotted when the 1390 comes around the corner. Now this 1390 is yellow and round. I'm just waiting on this reload. I'm thinking, oh god, this guy's going to yellow, yellow me and kill me. But in fact, he's not even interested in me. He's not paying attention. We try and clip him with the ram. We lose a bit of health. He loses a bit of health. We ought to aim one shot in. And we were trying to make sure that we got the other shot in, but he died. And then we pop a cheeky shot at this Leopard PTA at the end with an RBRT. Unfortunately enough for me, it went in. So again, we're waiting on the reload. We know where the enemy team is. There's two heavy tanks that are pushed into the middle on the D-line. And there's, there's the TDs down there and the light tank, which is the Hurlenhund. And I'm thinking, you know what? I've got a light tank here that looks like he's going to be coming with me. Because you can see just by the way he's moving at full speed. And there we go. He comes out of the train shed. I'm thinking, he's going to come out with me. So you know what? We're going to drop into this Hurlenhund and pop both shots in. So fortunately enough, both pen... And we actually track the Hurlin' Hun there in the end. And I'm just trying to keep myself away from him so he doesn't finish me off. And then our light tank YOLOs in and finishes him off. So again, we're just waiting for the reload. We're twiddling our thumbs. We're making sure that we're not going to get shot. Then the SU-130PM pops around the corner. So we're like keeping this tank in between us so that he doesn't shoot us. And I actually now want to help this guy out. So I pop two shots into the PTA to make him a one shot. But unfortunately our light tank then goes and rams the Conway. And he's not long for this world. And I'm kind of in an awkward situation now. Because I know that SC-130PM was down there. But I haven't quite clocked yet. That there's two TDs in the game. And one's now dead. Our artillery had actually one shot the SC-130PM. And I hadn't realised. So I was staying safe from the SC-130PM. And I hadn't realised I could have gone down the outside. But the Conway, we got one shot into him. Then the artillery shut him down. Now the... Leopard PTA has been shut down as well. I know where the next set of tanks are that I want to go get. And that is these guys here. Now, the Barask, I'm looking at going, Can I, should I go for that guy? I'm reloading. I want to go for the two guys on my level. But then I'm looking at the Barask going, Yeah, no, oh, God, no he's, he's pulling back. I'm not going to chance it. So I'm going to go after this heavy tank and this medium tank that is sat along here. The Inferno pops along. We finish off the Inferno. And then, I know I'm going to eat a shot, but I decide, you know what, I'm going to eat a shot and just pop one into the Centurion anyway. And now, that Centurion is going to get killed before I reload, so I'm going to try and go after the 257. But he's got two tanks that are surrounding him at the minute, and he's going to lose health very, very quickly. So I'm not going to get that. So I've decided, you know what, that Barask is up there, right? So I'm going to go try and cut the Barask off, because he is currently darting towards the edge of the hill. And I know that because of how quick the Barask is, I can get there to get damage first, basically. But he actually looks like he's coming off the hill, so I'm going to try and cut him off at the pass and try and hopefully get two shots into him, which would be nice to bump up our total above 4k. So he, when well, we managed to proxy spot each other. I unfortunately missed that first shot, pump the second shot in as he crushes across the, against the wall. And I'm now like, okay, I want to go follow this guy while I'm reloading. And it wouldn't be a set of replays if I didn't kill myself by driving. Woo! Because, you know, my driving skill's impeccable in this game. And as you can see, the Barask destroyed tank model at the minute 
is bugged and it, it can make for hilarious viewing where if you shoot someone and they die in a brask, their tank just becomes invisible and the tracks just you just see the destroyed tracks and gun just go flying along. It, honestly, it's so funny. A typical bug. A typical wargaming bug, that is. But it's, it's hilarious. But fortunately enough for me anyway in this game, they managed to see it through and finish off the last remaining tank. Which I would have been disappointed if we'd lost that game from that position. But you never know, it's happened before. But anyway, we finished that game with 2 kills, 4.2 case damage, 1300 assistance, confederate, sniper, high caliber. And that was a game where we, it wasn't in the best of conditions for the tank. It was in an uncomfortable map for it, which is Himmelsdorf. And we managed to use the gun to good effect. And it showed what the tank can do when you just keep reloading, keep popping out, double tap, pull back. Would I have done more in a Stone Cold in that situation? Definitely. Was the map more suited to a Stone Cold? Well, yeah, 100%, because the Stone Cold can at least bounce things, whereas this can't. It's a Batchat 12T, basically. So, yeah, but the Stone Cold is more accurate. It's got better gun handling, better pen, better double tap. It's just better than this tank in every way. But then the Stone Cold's kind of ridiculously strong, pretty much. And this, I would say, is a little bit more average. But it's still good. I mean, the nerfs it got don't hold it back as all as much. But here you're seeing the shell velocity and how slow it is at 1,000. Do you see how it just sort of looped in? Now, I end up getting spotted because that light tank yellows in. But I wasn't using the bush as effective as I could. And what I should have been doing... Is basically pulling back through the bush until it was not see-through anymore. And then firing. Because they would never have spotted me from over there at all. So I get unspotted here. And I'm like, okay. Now I'm unspotted. I'll just pop two shots through the bushes. And like you see. We're firing through this bush in front of me. And they can't spot me. So I'm just going to pull into the bush. And now try and just sit here to spot them. As they sit across there. And the camera rating of this tank means that they, they won't see me. I've got this dragon in, drow gun in front of me, which is getting spotted and slapped. And now we are loaded. I'm going to pull back through the bush, like I say, where the bush isn't see-through anymore. And I'm firing at this drow gun through the bush. And, you know, we're like 250, 300 meters away. And he's not spotting me. Whereas if I was to the left of this bush, he would, because I was firing. But that's just the great camo rating of the tank and using this, you know, the camo skills and stuff like that to make it better. It's, it's a tank that you've really got to be quite clever with. You've got to use the camo ability of the tank to definitely be able to make the most an advantage of the situations you're in. It can be an effective assassin with the double tap, but it's definitely played more like an assassinating scout. Where you can go spot things, but you can just chuck your shots in, double tap like we just did on that T29. And yeah, generally, I think it's, it's, it's quite a nice tank. It is quite a nice tank, but it doesn't. That reload, it just it's like a nagging. It's the nagging issue in the back of your head when you're playing it. In the fact that you're going, oh, yeah, I've thrown my double tap in, but now I've got to sit and wait for ages, you know. And here we go. Bad accuracy of the gun there on the Scorpion decides. Even though I'm shooting at the side of the uh, side of it, I probably should have aimed a little bit higher. But at the same time, it goes extremely low and only does track damage. And you see, I'm a little bit frustrated because obviously I missed that first one and then penned the scorpion. And now I'm just sat waiting. There is something up there that's just fired at my guy here. And it's making me wary. I'm hoping that I can see it. I'm trying to work out what it was. And it fires again and I don't see it. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to drive around this corner and shoot these guys. So I want to shut down the T29, which is what we do. And I'm aiming for a shot into the 45 TP and we get it. Now I get shot by the thing that's over there. And I'm like, right, okay, I'm going to keep this rock here between me and them so they can't shoot me. And the 45 TPs run away. So now we're waiting for the reload to go in. We're going to move forward and go for the guys that are over here and hopefully get some more damage. We know the scorpion's over here. I think it's a drow gun or something like that that's sat over here. I've seen it. It only hit me for about 300 something. It hit the guy next to me for 300 something. But then again... With the roll RNGs that we have, it probably is the Dragon. And as we come around the corner, I get set on fire by the Scorpion, but I finish him off. Now, we get unlucky that we get set on fire there, which is something that's going to happen because of where the engine is in the tank. You'll probably get set on fire quite a bit in it. 
which is a bit of annoying, but it's kind of like the Batchat 12T, like exactly the same where it get the engine damage and the fire. And I, you know what? I think I'm going to ignore the drag gun up top, and I'm going to go help our friends over here. And we come against this Barask. We both miss our first shot. He misses his second shot, but I fired before him, right? So that means that I'm going to win this, unless he activates food, of course, which means he he might reload before me but I'm confident that I'm definitely going to reload before this guy because he fired after I did so he's now running away and I'm confident I'm going to get the kill shot on him he gets tracked by someone else and not penned and I finish him off now there's only one guy left and it is the dragon that's on top of the hill who I expected to die ages ago but he finally gets finished off and those games I hope showed what the brass can do in its situations showed the good camo showed the good double tap and I've been really enjoying the tank in the load of games I've played it's been a hell of a lot of fun to play so we finished that game with high caliber first class 1600 odd base XP and a very nice game for the Brask again it's a very enjoyable tank it's just a shame about the reload so as always everybody thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time A great success!